Hi Year 10, I have extracted your height data from the Google form and just exported it into an Excel spreadsheet in order to create a scatter plot now and um, see if there's a correlation between your height, your current height and your parent height or guardian's height. So what we've got here, I've, I've taken your names off it so it's anonymous is the, the data you filled in the Google form but already I can see that I'm, I'm, this is going to be a useful column, but the height data, some people have put in cm for centimetres and others haven't. So I need to clean this data set first. So I'm just going to um, rewrite these uh, entries without the centimetres sign um, quickly. And this one's in metres, so I'm going to change it into centimetres as well so that I can correctly graph this um, data. Now, while I'm doing this, I'm learning valuable lessons that when I pose questions and create a survey, this is something I don't want to be doing again by having to clean the data set, especially if the survey is of a lot more people. Um, I want to somehow pose a question so that um, people are not able to um, put centimetres in that cell at the same time. All right, so I'm just going to centre my data make my table look a bit cleaner, bold the headings. I might make these a bit wider so I can read the headings a bit better. And now I'm going to highlight the first row and go to my data setting and press filter. I want to filter these results. I want to sort them. Uh, I want to sort this column so that I've got all the female results separate to all the male results. So I, I really want to see if there's a correlation between everybody's height um, but then if there's a better correlation between um, females and males separately. So I'm going to create three scatter plots. Now I'm thinking of the, the scatter plot we've got on the wall in the classroom and I'm fairly sure that the parent height is on the x-axis. And I know that if I highlight this information, Excel is going to use the column on the left to be on the x-axis. So I actually want to just cut this column, here it is, cut, and paste it. So I'm switching column B and C around so that it matches what we've got on the wall in the classroom. So first of all, I'm going to do a scatter plot and put everyone's height data in it. I go up to the insert um, tab after I've highlighted the data and go over to the scatter plot. And I choose the one without any lines, just the scatter plot. And we've got our relationship here. I need to label my axes, so I'm just going to go up to the quick layout and choose one that I know has axis titles on it. This one I know is the parent height in centimetres and this one was the student height student height centimetres so I've labelled that and I'm going to add my heading um, we'll do student first oh, no we'll start with the x-axis parent height versus student height and I don't need my legend so I know that's a text box I'll just see if I can delete that great so I've got that uh, graph going. And I can see there is some sort of correlation here. It's definitely positive because the gradient of a line here is positive. Um, but I need to think about the best way to display this data. I've noticed that the x-axis starts at zero, but the y-axis, the student height, um, excels automatically had that minimum value here starting at 150. And I need to think about is this the best way to display the data or not. Um, so for the moment I might just right click format axis and make my minimum on the y-axis zero to match the x-axis and see how that changes the display of the graph. I'm not changing any data points, but I'm just putting this into perspective so I can think about what is the best um, way to display this. And I found a typo in my heading while I was doing that, which I'm so sure you noticed before I did. That's better. Okay, so I've got this cluster here, clearly starting at zero, zero, is not the best way to display this data, but it does put in perspective that um, you guys, kind of your height is about 150 up to possibly about 190 centimeters for both you and your parents. So I might start my graph maybe at 140 on both the X and Y axis. Right click, format, and by doing this, I'm putting the data onto the full graph so I can look at it, interpret, analyze, and think about what this graph is actually showing me. That's better. 
Okay, so if I want to add a trend line, I need to not just click on the graph, but click on the, the series of points. Now that they're highlighted, I can right click and add a trend line. And Excel does that automatically and it's, it's chosen a linear trend line. If I had a different sort of correlation, I could pick one of these other trend line options from this toolbar over here. And I also want to add the equation onto the chart. We know how to calculate the equation by finding the gradient between two points and using the gradient intercept formula. But here we can see that Excel does it for us. And that equation is in a text box, so it was under some some points, so I'm just going to move it out of the way to somewhere where I can read it better. I can read it more easily. Alright, there we go. It's positive, my gradient's positive, and it's telling me that the y-intercept would be at about 85.5. So that's not too bad. Let's see if we can get a better correlation by considering just the female data in as another graph and the male data. I'm going to repeat the same process a lot quicker. I'm not going to bother with axis titles at the moment just to speed things, but I'm going to remind myself which data I'm plotting by just updating the headings as I go. And I'm going to put the axes for the moment on the same um, minimum bounds as my original graph. So when I'm looking at the three graphs all together in a moment, I'm really comparing apples with apples. Um, and I'm not getting any visual misrepresentation. So we may as well add a trend line while we're here. Gradient looks a little bit steeper in the first graph. Okay, now let's add the male data using the same process. Pop that over here, fit them on the page or just drag them across. Male data data only. And even though Excel tries to be helpful by putting these minimum bounds where it thinks I want them, I still need to have a look at that closely and, and control those values myself. Okay, so I would say that the cluster of male data is um, more heavily clustered around the higher values. If I had to describe that data set compared to the female data where I can see there's a cluster um, on, the, on the lower values and a couple of higher outliers for our female students, which is just an interesting comparison really between your heights. I need to think about which graph best represents um, your heights and draws a, a conclusion about is there really a correlation between your height um, compared to your parent height. Now remember that parent height was the parent that's the same gender as you. Um, and when I look at the female and the male data, I don't think I've got enough data points. I've got outliers out here, I could delete them. But even if I deleted them, my line would change. And it's not giving me enough information to draw a conclusion from the bottom two graphs. Um, keeping that in mind, if I highlight the number of females I've got over here, just highlight those cells, one less, and I go down here, I can have a quick glance and see that there's there's 12 female students that completed this survey and we have a count of 10 male students. So really 12 data points and 10 data points respectively are probably not enough to draw a decent conclusion about this bivariate data. But when I added them together and got the count of 22, um, I've got a, a nicer spread of data and um, just that many, well, I've got double the data points to, to look at the first graph and say that's probably my most reliable from the information I have. If I was doing this again, I would consider doing a larger survey and getting more, more Year 10 students to complete this survey. So in conclusion, we have learnt how to um, clean a data set up in Excel, sort it using the um, filter function under the data tab. We've inserted a scatter graph, we've clicked on eat the points and inserted a trend line and then from that trend line we've learnt how to put the display the equation on the graph by formatting the trend line in this table over here. Well done guys and thank you for um, submitting your data to enable us to, to com compare your height with your parent height.